What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. Now, I got a lot of comments on my Players Cup 3 run as well as on Twitter. People were like, hey Marcos, are you ever going to release the EV spreads for the team that you used? And yes, I am going to. I was always just going to release it after I got all those videos up. So today we're going to be doing a team breakdown, you know, just a general overview of the Appleton team I brought to Players Cup 3. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer my comment question of the day, who should I use to qualify for Players Cup 4 now that the details have been announced regarding that? And let me know if you guys want any Players Cup 4 content regarding like the prize pools and stuff. Let me know. So yeah, uh, how I typically do team breakdowns is I'll just talk about the team in general. Like I'll go through each individual Pokemon, explain the EV spreads and stuff, and then past that, I'm you know once we're done with the EV spreads, I'm gonna talk about particular matchups and how I would play through them. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. I guess we should start off with the star of the show being Appleton. Now. I got a lot of questions regarding Appleton. Uh, the main question regarding Appleton pretty much being, why? <laughs> uh, there isn't too much of a reason for Appleton, I'll be honest. When I when I team build around a Pokemon that I like, I will choose a Pokemon that I think is cool and justify it later. That's always been my philosophy when it comes to team building around my favorites. Uh, Appleton was a Pokemon that I saw some potential for, but it was more of instead of being like a really cool metagame pick, it was more in line of, I think Appleton's cool and I'm going to find a team that I can run it on rather than I think Appleton's phenomenal and I'm going to run a team with it because I want to win. Like, just I just want to win. No, it was more about fun for me. Uh, but Appleton matchup wise does really well against both weathers and it also does pretty well in under trick room like it's one of the slowest pokemon in the game it's 30 speed it speed ties with amoongus which is really nice um and thick fat actually increases its longevity on the field especially versus things like lapdog and calyrex ice it can actually take some surprising hits from calyrex ice so that's you know appleton's main deal on the field it's just a strong grass type dragon moves under trick room are really strong for beating uh physical trick room pokemon because it does allow me to lower their attack stats but let's go over the moveset and the ev spread so this guy's running weakness policy with thick fat apple acid grassy glide draco meteor and protect quiet natured max hp 4 attack 28 defense 132 special attack and 92 special defense so I have the calcs up here on another screen. Please excuse me, I have to refer to these calcs. So uh, versus Kyogre, Appleton can do a couple of things. So 252 max special attack Kyogre's uh, max hailstorm, so it's Dynamaxed, uh, versus this Appleton will actually only be a 35% or 37% chance to Oko if I'm not Dynamaxed. So uh, if I don't want to waste my Dynamax, there's actually a pretty decent chance that if I protect on that Max Hailstorm, I won't take too much damage. On top of that, I could actually just straight up tank a hit since it maxes out at around, or it, it's between 90 to 106 damage. However, if I do Dynamax, I take advantage of Appleton's insane bulk, uh, and I'm actually going to be able to always survive that hit. Uh, 252 Special Attack Kyogre's Max Hailstorm is actually only going to bring me down to at most 60% um, health, or 60 something percent health, because, uh, or that's not it, but it's doing 45 to 53% uh, to my Appleton, uh, and that's actually going to activate my weakness policy and allow me to go on the offensive there uh, and hit it with a plus two, you know, because my weakness policy uh, max overgrowth, which has an 87% chance to straight up Oko a 4 HP Kyogre, uh, and... Something interesting about Appleton is the weakness policy thing, you know, it has a usable attack stat. What I did is I ran Grassy Glide because if my Dynamax ends, uh, I'm actually going to be setting up Grassy Terrain. And that's also the reason I didn't go with G-Max Appleton because G-Max Appleton can't do that. This regular Appleton will be able to set up a Grassy Terrain by going for its max moves. And likely after those turns of maxing, it's gonna have its weakness policy by then. And that'll allow it to go for plus two priority Grassy Glide when Trick Room's over. So it's actually able to attack on both ends with physical or special attacks. And on top of that, have a really powerful priority move. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna be able to probably Oko a Kyogre with a plus two Apple Acid uh, if it's not Dynamaxed. If it is Dynamaxed, it's gonna be a two hit KO, uh, but it is a very good chance to two hit KO. Uh, Grassy Glide versus 4 HP Kyogre. If I just like, you know, if Trick Room's run out, uh, it's actually a 25% chance to one hit KO. And usually Kyogre isn't going to be at full health, you know, after my Dynamax. So if Trick Room ends, I'm pretty much always going to one shot the Kyogre or finish off the Kyogre with a plus two Grassy Glide. So that's always really fun. <clears throat> 
Versus Groudon, it has an even better matchup because it resists Fire Punch because of Thick Fat, and it also naturally resists Ground Moves. So versus Groudon, um, on the more specially defensive side, because a lot of people are running more specially defensive Groudon, um, my max overgrowth from plus two is actually going to be a guaranteed two hit KO versus Dynamax Groudon, which means I'm one hit KOing regular Groudon. Uh, and the and what is it? Um, Groudon's max Quake is actually going to be a guaranteed three hit KO at plus two. So if they decide to go for a Swords Dance with their Groudon, which is a very common thing right now, uh, my Appleton's going to be three hit KO'd by that if I Dynamax it, which is really nice. Versus Venusaur, which comes with Groudon, uh, I pretty much just EV'd this thing to be able to always take a modest Sludge Bomb. So when I'm not Dynamaxed, a modest Sludge Bomb is guaranteed to hit KO. It maxes out at 83% damage. This is the most interesting one though. I don't have the calcs on screen, I'm just talking about them. Um, Lapras, so, and if you guys want to reference this, this paste will be in the description down below. Uh, Lapras is one of the most interesting matchups because while Lapras is one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the game, especially when it Dynamaxes, uh, and even though it's a, like an ice type, it should have a pretty decent matchup versus Appleton. Because I'm running P2 Appleton, I usually would set up Trick Room versus it, and that allows for this situation. So Life Orb Max Special Attack Lapras, which most of them don't max out their special attack, versus a Dynamaxed Appleton is still guaranteed to hit KO. It's only going to be able to do about 65% to me when I'm Dynamaxed, which will also give me my weakness policy. So if I were to go for my Max Overgrowth off of Apple Acid onto this Lapras, even though it just got screens up, I'm still going to be two hit KOing it. And if I trick room down that same turn, I always win the Lapras 1v1. Or I always beat that Lapras with the initial exchange on, on like turn one and stuff. As long as my trick room goes off, I win, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, versus Calyrex, which is one of the more interesting ones. Uh, what is this? 252 attack, uh, positive attack nature, uh, life orb, Calyrex, ice, glacial lance versus my... Dynamax to Appleton, so just a regular Glacial Lance, not like lowered by anything, is actually a guaranteed 2 hit KO if I Dynamax. It's only going to be doing about 90% maximum, which allows me to Trick Room on the same turn they go for a Glacial Lance, but of course that isn't the optimal way to use this. Uh, if they are at minus 1, their Life Orb Max Hailstorm is actually still a guaranteed 2 hit KO, maxing out at about 85% damage when I Dynamax. So that's really cool. Um, and while I don't necessarily 1v1 them, I am actually able to wall them out for a decent amount of turns by under Trick Room going for Max Wormwind. So plus two, uh, my Max Wormwind is going to be doing about 44% maximum. So it's a three hit KO, but I'm also lowering their attack stat with every turn. So I'm sort of able to wall out Calyrex for a few turns if I have my Reflect up, if I have an Intimidate up. And a lot of this team likes to a lot of like the main thing that this team likes to do is just set up reflect, set up light screen, uh, go for intimidate, cycle in and out, and just sort of waste a Dynamax and then capitalize on the waste of Dynamax and sweep from there. That's sort of how I play most of my teams. I like to just waste people's Dynamaxes and then win. That's sort of my main team building philosophy within Dynamax format, if you haven't noticed by now. Uh, but yeah. Next up on the team is the Incineroar, which this Incineroar is very standard. It's just 252, 124, 132 with the sassy nature and zero speed IVs. A lot of people are like, why zero speed IVs? Why absolutely minimum speed? Uh, and that's pretty much just because under Trick Room, I want to make sure that my Incineroar is always going to be able to outspeed things. Uh, I would like my parting shot to go second most of the time. And it also makes it less of a guessing game. Whenever I face an opposing Incineroar, I can pretty much always say, okay, I'm going second. Uh, so it's less of, I don't like having that mind game of like how much speed do they have in their Incineroar, which you could say puts me at a disadvantage in a lot of situations with the fake out uh, war, but it isn't as bad as you think. Like I, they usually gonna fake out the other Pokemon unless it's like an obvious Dynamax. So I usually just play it very safe and I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to fake out this Incineroar if they go for a fake out on me since they're faster. Um, so yeah, and I, I never had to deal with the speed tie with this, which is really nice. So this guy is running a Figgy Berry, the ability to intimidate, fake out, flare blitz, taunt, parting shot with that EV spread that I previously said. Uh, because I'm running zero speed, I can actually invest a little bit more into bulk, which comes in handy a lot. So this Incineroar is able to naturally tank a minus one uh, Calyrex's Life Orb Max Quake. It's only going to be doing about 94% maximum with a minimum of 79%. So I always get my Figgy Berry off. Um, if, you know, the Calyrex leaves the field. So, you know, Calyrex isn't actually going to allow me to get my berry, but you know what I mean? I'm going to be within berry range for the moment it does leave. Kyogre is at minus two, which is actually a very common occurrence with this team. Like I said, uh, what I like to do is set up Trick Room with this team. And since my Porygon 2 is running 
Eerie Impulse. I'm going to be able to Eerie Impulse Kyogres very often. Uh, so minus two special attack, uh, 252 max special attack, Mystic Water Kyogre. It's Water Spout in Rain is a 43% chance to Oko me, uh, which I do have a slightly higher chance of living. Uh, however, I'm, you know, under Trick Room, I'm going to be able to Parting Shot on them. So uh, in the situation where I have a Light Screen up because of my Grim Snarl, and I did already Parting Shot the Kyogre earlier in the match, or maybe just by some other means they have lowered special attack at minus one with light screen up. Uh, I'm actually guaranteed to live that hit and get off my berry again. It's gonna be maxing out at 95% damage. Uh, versus Kyogre, this Incineroar is going to naturally be able to take a um, max attack at minus one uh, Groudon's Precipice Blades, which is really useful. Uh, versus Zacian, this actually was a calc that came in handy. Um, so Zacian at neutral, its Sacred Sword is never going to KO me. It's only going to be doing 70% maximum, 59% minimum. So I'm I'm not going to get my berry quite yet. I, I might get my berry, uh, but usually I'll, I, I won't. Uh, versus a Zacian at neutral with the Reflect up, it's actually a guaranteed 3-hit KO, which is really cool uh, because that saved me in a match once. I had a Zacian at neutral and my Reflect was up and I absolutely tanked a Sacred Sword. I like lived on six health and it was really cool. It clutched the game for me, so that was useful. Uh, with the guaranteed 3-hit KO, it's maxing out at 47% damage with a minimum of 39. Uh, so yeah, uh, the Incineroar is mostly a board positioning mon. It likes to, you know, switch in and out, go for parting shots. Taunt was really useful for uh, preventing reverse trick rooms. And there were some situations where I needed to prevent a taunt on other Pokemon. So when I faced things like Umbreon, which could taunt my P2, uh, what I would do is I would try to lower their speed with Grim Snarl by going for a Thunder Wave. And then I would be able to sort of finagle the board in a way where I'd be able to taunt that uh, taunt user and then be able to get off my trick room my Porygon too. So there were some downsides to having minimum speed But it isn't nearly as bad as you'd think uh, I personally think I did make the right call with minimum speed and Cinera just because of the bulk it lent me in most matchups was really useful uh, I never actually lost a match because it couldn't outspeed a taunt user. It wasn't really that bad Next up we have Porygon 2 this guy's running Eviolite, Download, Try Attack, Eerie Impulse, Recover, Trick Room, 252 HP, 116 Defense, 140 Special Defense, with a Sassy Nature. Um, yeah, so Try Attack, Eerie Impulse, Recover, Trick Room. That's like a very standard Porygon too. Some people run Ice Beam or Thunderbolt over Try Attack, but I personally uh, just liked having Try Attack for stab damage. It came in handy a lot, and the statuses every once in a while were actually pretty clutch. This guy is pretty simple. Like really, it's just meant to tank a hit from Kyogre and wall out most things. Like I said, I have Light Screen, Reflect, and Intimidate on this team, so if Porygon 2 can't naturally like get 3-hit KO'd by it, it eventually will be 3-hit KO'd, and with Recover, it has a lot of longevity. This thing in particular is just going to be able to take a Mystic Water, Kyogre's Water Spout really easily. It does 70% maximum uh, with no modifiers or anything on the field, so it's a guaranteed 2-hit KO. I can get my Trick Room off and then Recover. Uh, but if I do get a light screen off, it makes it even better. Uh, my Grim Snarl can go for a light screen next to my Porygon 2 if I know the opponent isn't running Taunt on their, um, on their what's it called, Tornadus, which happened a lot more often than you'd think <laughs> in uh, Player's Cup 3. So I would be able to just live that hit really easily. It's a guaranteed 3 hit KO if I get a light screen off. So that was really cool. Uh, and of course, my next Pokemon is that I actually made Calx for is the Grim Snarl. The Calyrex Ice and the Thunderous, I didn't really record Calx for because they're just max max. I know I could have optimized them a little bit better, but I didn't really care enough. Uh, I sort of made this team. Th this team is like a a ladder team. This team is a non-open team sheet team, which is why I don't have a way of self proccing my Appleton, barring like <laughs> spirit breaking it, which just isn't worth it. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't noticed, this team is not an open team sheet team, but it worked fine enough in open team sheet, which is why I ran it. So closed team sheet, it was fine. So <laughs> I, I don't know why I went on that tangent, but that, it is. It's it's a closed it's a closed team sheet team. Uh, the Grim Snarl is really only in particular meant to live a hit from Kyogre. Uh, like I said, Light Screen goes up. It eats the Mystic Water Max Special Attack uh, Water Spout. And then under Trick Room, it'll be able to Spirit Break, do whatever. Uh, this guy's running Light Screen, Spirit Break, uh, Reflect, Thunder Wave. The ability's Prankster, 244 HP, 116 Defense, 148 Special Defense. The defense is just dumped. And I did initially just steal this from Picolytics, but from what I can tell, that's all this is meant to do. So yeah, 
Uh, Grimstar was actually really useful because it did allow me to uh, have a little bit more longevity with my team, get decent speed control, and Thunder Whip Paralysis was really clutch in certain situations. The other Pokemon on the team, of course, are just Calyrex and Thunderous, which, you know, I didn't really go over. Uh, Calyrex is what Calyrex usually is. It's just a Life Orb, Physical Attacker, Glacial Lance, Protect, Trick Room, High Horsepower. Having two Trick Rooms on the team was really useful, and Calyrex is just a really oppressive Pokemon. Anything that says it resists a Calyrex Glacial Lance is lying. That is straight up a lie. You don't resist Calyrex Glacial Lance. That's a myth. It does way too much damage. Uh, and the fact that you can get up to plus two by just finishing off like a 20 health Incineroar and another Pokemon on the field, the fact that you can get a free Swords Dance off by KOing them with one move is absurd, and I think it's kind of gross. Thunderous is here mostly as a way to improve my Sun matchup. Thunderous has a pretty decent Sun matchup uh, since uh, I'm running Lumberry, I'm going to be able to take a Sleep Powder from a Venusaur for free. I can Dynamax this thing, I avoid Intimidates because of uh, Defiant. Also, Thunderous Calyrex is a really threatening lead since you can't Intimidate the Calyrex without giving Thunderous a boost. Wild Charge, Fly, Protect, Superpower, it's all very standard, just max max. So now we're going to go over matchups, general matchup stuff, and this team actually, you know, it does pretty well versus most matchups. Um, I have a tab with common Pokemon here so I can sort of talk about it. So I guess the first matchup I'll go over is Lapdog. Lapdog isn't a phenomenal matchup, but it does pretty well. Um, basically what you want to do versus Lapdog is if you think they're going to lead off with um, Zacian, like there's very little reason not to lead off with Incineroar with this team. What you want to usually do is lead off Incineroar Porygon 2 or Grimmsnarl Porygon 2 uh, and get off that Trick Room as soon as possible. 90% of the time, you're going to want to Dynamax the Calyrex Ice because you need, you absolutely need Trick Room to beat Lapdog with this team. Um, Zacian is way too much of an issue for Calyrex Ice that it, it can't beat it unless Trick Room is up. Obviously, Behemoth Blade is going to be doing a ton of damage, and I believe there's a chance that with Reflect Up and the Zacian at minus one, you might be able to live a Behemoth Blade when you're Dynamaxed and go for a Max Quake, but beyond that, no chance, so don't even try for that. You want to play for the Trick Room endgame, so get Trick Room off as, as, as early as possible. Uh, use Porygon 2, Appleton, Incineroar, or Grimmsnarl, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. Um, as effectively as you can to stall out the Lapras' Dynamax. And since they're usually Life Orb and not Light Clay, there's only a couple of turns where they're going to be uh, taking less damage than usual. Once those turns are up, once that Dynamax is up, you can go on the offensive with your Calyrex. Uh, it's mostly a board positioning thing. You want to be able to Dynamax this Calyrex Ice and get KOs on Zacian since a Max Quake on Zacian is pretty much free with Calyrex. You'll be able to one-shot it 90% of the time. Uh, and from there on, once the Zacian's gone, the, the matchup's very easy. It's mostly a game of stall out the Lapras Dynamax, beat the Zacian, and then you win. Uh, so that isn't too bad for the team. You can still win even if you Dynamax the Appleton. However, it isn't recommended. Uh, there were a few matchups I had where I was facing a Zacian with Calyrex not Dynamaxed. And at plus one, if you manage to get the Calyrex up to plus one, the Zacian is not taking that Glacial Lance well at all. So... Damage on Zacian is very important. You pretty much want to prioritize that for the majority of the matchup. So yeah, uh, it's it's sort of hard to explain. You can watch my matches where I did face a Zacian Lapras team and you'll sort of see what I meant. Uh, all of those are in a playlist, by the way, on my Players Cup 3 matches. So that's pretty much the Zacian Lapras matchup. While it is a pretty common team, it has fallen off recently. So you shouldn't really expect to face it too much. I think I faced it a lot more than people usually would have in this tournament. But yeah. Next up, I'll go over the Torn Ogre matchup, which is something that a lot of people struggle with. Torn Ogre is kind of easy with this team. Uh, basically, Porygon 2 and Grimstar will do such an effective job of stopping Torn Ogre from being able to do their thing that it isn't too hard. Uh, yes, a taunt from the uh, Tornadus is pretty annoying. However, if you lead off Incineroar Porygon 2, it's perfectly fine to fake out the Tornadus and go for the Trick Room. It's perfectly fine to just do that and sack your Incineroar. Uh, because as long as you get the Trick Room up, Calyrex Ice comes in and wins, and Appleton can Dynamax and come in and win. It's it's not hard once the Trick Room's up. Uh, Torn Ogre, of course, like, you know, a skilled player can pivot around this. It can play a lot smarter. Uh, but the average Torn Ogre user, you're going to be fine versus. You're going to be absolutely fine. <laughs> it's it's going to be like set up Trick Room, reverse sweep. Just don't think past it beyond, like, don't think beyond that too hard. Uh, it isn't a terrible matchup. Next up is the Sun matchup. Um, oh, with Torn Ogre, 
just, yeah, just get Trick Room up. You have a couple of opportunities. Uh, Grim Snarl, I forgot, I need to mention this. Grim Snarl is pretty important for that because if you do lead off Grim Snarl versus uh, Kyogre and they don't end up leading off with Tornadus, you're going to win even harder because you just Trick Room for free uh, after getting the light screen up. And then Grim Snarl is going to be able to go for Spirit Breaks versus that uh, Kyogre and do a lot of damage since it's a physical attack versus a Kyogre uh, while also lowering the special attack. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I'm going to go over Sun next. Sun is pretty good. I actually did lose to Sun uh, in the tournament. Sun was the team that knocked me out, but it was due to the player being phenomenal. Slim does amazing in that matchup. So basically versus Sun, uh, you have a couple of options. You can lead off Thunderous most of the time. You can actually go Thunderous and Cinnaror if you think they're going to lead off with Groudon and Venusaur. Uh, because if they lead off Groudon and Venusaur, not only do you get a minus one on the Groudon and fake out pressure on the Venusaur, but if they decide to go for a Sleep Powder versus your uh, Thunderous, you're going to be able to eat that for free. You know, you get the you get the Lumberry after the Sleep, even if like if they connect at all. Uh, and you're going to be able to get a free KO versus the Venusaur. Uh, in like, Groudon doesn't do phenomenal versus Thunderous in my opinion. A lot of people be a lot of people PV. A lot of people will um, run like Rock Slide or something like that to be able to go for a max Rockfall versus Thunderous. But I think with this team, with how much defensive play you have, if you just if you just get rid of the Venusaur, Appleton comes in later on in the game and absolutely walls out the the Groudon. I feel like if a Groudon Dynamax is versus this team, it usually doesn't end too well. There are a couple of better Dynamax options on Sun teams other than Groudon. I think Venusaur, if it Dynamax, is a lot more threatening versus this team, but generally speaking, it's another case of get off the Trick Room and win, or lead off Thunderous and win. It, it's one or the other. It's, it's not too difficult. Uh, I, I actually really enjoy facing Sun with this team. Colossal is another better matchup for this team. Um, I, Colossal ironically was actually the match that I lost <laughs> uh, versus Joe though so I don't really I don't really call that like a bad colossal matchup you re you pretty much always want to lead off with Grim snarl Porygon 2 um, versus colossal because it gives you options if you see them lead off with like dragapult and colossal you know they're gonna go for a surf and a max move you can trick room for free versus colossal for the most part uh, and just set up light screen to eat the hit in trick room. And then, you know, through Light Screen, Colossal doesn't do too much damage. You can go for Eerie Impulses with the Porygon to, to beat Colossal down. And then from that point on, it's another case of you stalled out their Dynamax, you walled them out, you have all your Pokemon in the field, Dynamax and Sweep. It's it's pretty much it. Uh, however, if your opponent is smart and they say like, okay, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to wait out the Trick Room. If they don't immediately Dynamax the Colossal, like 90% of brain dead Colossal players will on the ladder, uh, you'll be fine. So... Or, or you won't be fine because then you have to set up Trick Room a couple more times. I would say if they're a smart Colossal player and they try to play defensively on your initial Trick Room, you might want to go on the offense a little bit earlier because if you waste your offensive Trick Room turns, uh, you're going to be in a rough spot towards the end of the game. Basically, it's, it's a matter of getting Light Screen up and keeping Porygon too healthy. So uh, I would say the Colossal player is more inclined to make really hard reads. So if you're able to play versus that sort of thing, you'll, you'll be fine. I don't know if I did the greatest job breaking down this team. I mean, it's been a while since I actually played with it. It's been a couple of days, you know, the whole tournament was last week and I hardly even practiced for it. Uh, I guess my main way of selling this team to you is I had not played any Pokemon for like two weeks preceding this tournament and I went pretty deep into it. I went three and two and it's a double elimination tournament with five rounds. So <laughs> yeah, I went pretty deep into it. Uh, so it's a pretty easy team to pilot. You do need to know the calcs, but all things considered, I think it was a really fun team to pilot for Players' Cup 3, and I think it's a pretty reliable team for the most part. So yeah, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and yeah, I think I'll be hitting the ladder tomorrow with something new. Maybe I'll be doing a team builder on Showdown. I have no idea what I want to record tomorrow. All I know is I have a test in the morning, and I need to get back to studying, so <laughs> I will see you guys then. Uh, all the resources, the team pace, the code, everything in the description down below if you guys want to check it out, and yeah. Bye.